Hey, this is Olivier, and you're watching the Internet of Things show. And today we have John, John with us uh, to talk about the uh, C SDK for Azure IoT Hub. Hey, yeah. John. Hey, it's great to be here. <laughs> Thanks for coming. So, John, mm -hmm. let us know, uh, let me know actually, and uh, the audience, who you are and what you're doing at Microsoft. I'm John Spaeth, and I'm a developer on the Azure IoT C SDK team. So you basically are building an open source SDK for connecting devices to Azure, correct? That's, that's correct. With Azure, you know, we try and meet developers wherever they are. And we know there's a lot of folks out there that have small microcontrollers where we're talking hundreds of kilobytes of RAM and ROM. We know there's people that have legacy C code out there that they don't want to rewrite just to tie up to Azure. Mm -hmm. Or we also know there's people who see as their most pro comfortable programming language. And so wherever they're at with the CSDK, we try and meet them there as one of the points we can do. Yeah. And actually from the, the readings of research or whatever, it seems like C is still the top language in embedded, yeah. right, for building devices. Yes. Cool. So um, we have that CSDK has been there from the get-go, right, since Azure IT Hub has been available and has evolved. It has all the functionalities in there. Um, but I guess today what we want to know is how do you develop for a device using the CSDK? What is it? What is the prerequisite in terms of the tooling? And then how do you get the code or the packages? And how do you go on your device mm -hmm. and connect it? Indeed. Well, as we say, we try and meet developers where they're at. And so we have first-class development for both Windows and Linux. Okay. And so today we're actually going to demonstrate it on Linux. Oh, cool. So okay. an easy jump off point is we actually have app git packages for people developing on Debian-based Linux distros. No, I don't believe you. Show me. Well, <laughs> well I will. <laughs> Okay, so simple sudo apt-get install. What's the name? Azure IoT SDK C dev. And there's one prerequisite you have to do. It's all very well documented in the GitHub. But then after you do that, you point to the right package repository, you're good to go. Okay, so what you have now is the libraries, right? So now you can yeah. work against the libraries with your code. Yes. Uh, for, for this. And let's, and, let's show, and, let's show, and let's show the headers. Just this is standard Unix uh, var. So there we go. If you want to start developing, this is just standard GCC, whatever, Clang, whatever. we support both of those compilers, okay. and then the libs are in an analogous location, and you're basically good to go at this point. Awesome. So that's pretty straightforward. Yes. So now if I want to debug, right? Yes. So these are binary libraries, which is pretty straightforward. Uh, if you don't want to have to deal with the mm -hmm. actual insights of that SDK, not that it's not looking good. It's, <laughs> it's, it's nice I, I'm on it. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but actually, yeah. Can you show us actually what's the processes? What if I want to debug and want to enter into breakpoints and something that code? Yes, all of our source code is open source, and not just the actual master. It's also the working branches that we're working on as well. Okay. Which has another cool uh, pause. Yeah. Another benefit of the fact that it's open source is that we can and do take pull requests from our customers. Okay. Actually, is it something that happens? For yes, real? it absolutely yeah. happens, and it's exciting to me to see more and more non-Microsoft folks putting the contribution in. That we get not just the Microsoft brain power, but we get the community brain power as well behind this. That's awesome. So let's go ahead and yeah. show what the the repo looks like. Okay, so you're just basically doing a git clone. We're doing a git clone, <laughs> and then while we're while this is coming down, we can actually why don't we go look at actually what the source code looks like on GitHub. Okay. So this is the CSDK. Uh, you can see we have some history here. Our as I said, our working branches are all available. Okay. And you can also see the pull request. Nice. And one of these is nice. one of these is internal, and these are actually coming. These are good fixes coming from our community, and some of these are actually very non-trivial. Awesome. So it's really it's really been exciting to see this. Great. Can you go back to the code tab here real quick? Yes. So um, I know the the SK, right? But yes. I, I'll play dumb for a minute. Um, can you just like surf through the the top level re like folders and tell what they are about? Because there are some differences between these folders, right? Yes, uh, for the for the person just doing standard debugging on the Azure SDK, that I want to send a message, receive a message. Probably the best place to start is going to be the IoT Hub client itself. Okay. So I think we probably just jump right there. Okay. So that's the that's the part of the code that will run on a device, and and it basically executes that connectivity authentication, sending, and receiving, and so forth, right? Yes. This is this is kind of the main the main area right here, and those yeah. other folders are either features that aren't used as that aren't as critical, or their dependencies that the client itself has. Okay. Got it. 
Uh, one of the so, for instance, I mean, it's our source code is all right here. Are there any external dependencies? I mean, are you are we using some other libraries that are not part of that package? There are. For instance, we're using JSON, uh, Parson, which is a JSON parsing library. Okay. And obviously, if you're running on a device that implies you need to have a TCP stack, you need to have locks, et cetera. Okay. And so what we've designed there, because we know we run on a diversity of hardware, we have a platform abstraction layer. OK. I think we'll talk about that a bit in okay. details later on. OK, cool. And okay, also, so I think, also, I think worth calling out is the test. Yeah, we have, we have extensive both unit test and end-to-end -end test. OK, awesome. And that's part of the code. So actually, everyone can go and run this test, I guess, right? Ab absolutely. OK, so you've, do, you've done a git clone that I hope is done for now. And it should be done, yes. Yeah, cool. So you have the code locally now. Uh, we'll need to compile, right? We'll need to compile. And so what we mm. use is CMake. This is a standard open source, source tool, tool. You can think of it as basically being an abstraction on top of other make files. Okay. So what that means is we've defined once it says, this is how you build the Azure IoT client. Mm -hmm. And then it will generate, if you're on a Linux platform, it will generate make files. And if you're on Windows platform, it will generate Visual oh, Studio files. Right. So that gives you that cross-platform uh, aspect that you could once, you'd, you'd determine or define the com compiler options once, and then based on the platform you're running on, uh, it actually works. Uh, absolutely. And it's pretty fast, too. So why don't we show what, what we, that looks so like? As a matter of fact, let me ask you, sorry for the interruption. So you, you talked about test and not yes. cross-platform. So how do we ensure that, and because we have a very fast release cycle and we have external contributions, mm -hmm. so what's, what's the deal with, with, test, with, with actually testing all of that code on the various platforms that are out there? So we have, uh, our, before we take anything in the master, we have an automated gated system. So okay. there's even one thing fails, the entire branch submission fails. And we have the test running on a n number of platforms, obviously Windows, various flavors of Linux. Okay. And we also have it on some embedded platforms as well. Right. What's the platform used for that? Jenkins? Jenkins, yes. Jenkins, cool, awesome. OK, so CMake, um, you would compile that. What else can you show us in there? Sure, so we can compile it. And this will actually, the generation is pretty fast. You have to move to the CMake folder. You move to the CMake folder. That's a best practice. And that's also important because we have a .git ignore, which tells Git to know that please don't think these are changes I'm doing on purpose. It basically says, this is my private directory. And we've hard coded that CMake in here as a best practice. Do you have some guidance like for the developers who want to contribute on all of that? A absolutely. We have It's fairly well documented on GitHub. It, okay. uh, it's the first thing you'll see is a readme. And then, for instance, for pull requests, we have, OK, these are the five steps, for instance, you have to do before you actually would submit it to Microsoft. Awesome. And yeah. the team's very accessible. <clears throat> and so if you're not sure about something, we also have GitHub issues, of course. So you say, hey, I think I would like to add this before I go spend how many hours. CSDK yes. team, could you do like a pre check for me? And okay. again, we, we would definitely be happy to do that. Okay. Awesome. Yeah, it would be rude not to. Yes, it would. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are trying to help us. We want to help you guys yeah, back. Yeah. So at this point, I have the CMake built. And you can roughly see we were looking at the source code layout previously. The CMake more or less mirrors that. OK. So we saw IoT Hub client on the github.com with a source. There's an analogous where IoT Hub client lives also. So for instance, all the tests. All the, so I would go into one of these directories, for instance. OK. Let's go into one of the unit tests. OK, and unit test, as hoped, compiles very quickly. Oh, that was already compiled? It's yeah. compiled. Awesome. So that's, <laughs> that's, that's, that's the point. Well, I mean, if, it, if it takes half the interview to <laughs> compile the unit test, we have other problems. This is so not yes. edited. This is real This thing. is real time. <laughs> but that's a device platform, right? So it's, it's, it's meant to be tiny and optimized for yes. these tiny devices. Absolutely. And the unit test specifically doesn't take any dependencies on the PAL. It only it abstracts all of that out. It only tests the individual unit at the correct layer. OK, love it. OK, what, what else can you tell us about the CSDK? So like pretty straightforward to get the code to compile. Pretty straightforward. Uh, the other thing, maybe a quick sample, maybe a little yeah. demo. Okay. Yeah. Because it doesn't work if it doesn't it run, gotta run, right? <laughs> Compiling is not enough. Now, first thing, I'm gonna, like I say, we talk about how easy it is to modify the source code. Why don't I start by modifying the source code? OK. So which 
part of the code are you looking at right now? So right now, if you look right here, this is the samples directory. Okay. Where and this is printed, this is a AMQP, which is one of the uh, it's a message queuing transport to allow the club, uh, the hub, and the individual device to communicate back and okay. forth to each other. Okay. And this just basically shows I'm sending a message up to the cloud. I'm getting confirmation that message has been received. Okay. Now the one thing we have to change because it is a sample, and we're trying to keep it straightforward, is there is this thing called the device connection string. Uh -huh. So. In actual real product devices, I know you've talked about this with other folks. This is yes. much more complicated to Don't productize this. <laughs> Don't do this unless you're talking with Olivier yeah. on MSDN. But this is a demo. Don't put your code in your 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 credentials for a device in the code. That's not good practice. Yeah, but horrible practice. There's other ways to do that using safe storage, using provisioning servers, using plenty of other things that are safe and secure. This is for demo purposes. We are showing you the worst way just to <laughs> get this over with. Well, the way that developer use basically, right? Yes. It's, it's real life. When you're developing, you don't want to mess up with a third, you know, party solution or service, whatever. You want to have your code and run from there. So, still, don't do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, at this point, I've updated this. I think. Okay. Yeah, that looks the right the right time. At this point, I'm going back into the CMake folder. Mm -hmm. and at this point, it, it, it perfectly mirrors where I made the source code change. So then you just do a make. We just do a make. Uh, Again, this is this is all this is all real time. So uh, this, and this right. actually is Boom, built a lot compiled. more. This actually is building the real honest goodness end to end. Okay. And then at this point, run the app. Run the app, and this is what we're looking for right here. This confirmation okay uh -huh. means that we've sent the message to the server, and the servers acknowledge the fact that it's received. It. Yeah, and because like once again, everything is open source, the sample included. You can go and check it out, and you can definitely like if you have like more sophisticated IDEs. Again, put a breakpoint. Absolutely. Check out the memory state, whatever. So that's pure. Uh, you're you're in the code. Awesome. And speaking of memory state, another thing I think that especially on the Linux that we do is, which I think is kind of cool, is the fact we use memory checking tools, including Valgrind and Helgrind. Okay. So these will actually go and say, okay, John, you've just had a bad day. Get some more coffee. You've just had a memory leak. <laughs> and this is this is this is this is very very powerful. Yeah. And even though it's Linux specific, because the vast majority of our code is not. PAL, we make the PAL as tiny as possible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That catches bugs across all the platforms. That's awesome. We, we understand you, as my boss's <laughs> boss says, we bury these devices underneath rocks, so they need to be rock solid. <laughs> like and we the, take that very, very seriously. I, I like the analogy, but yeah, <laughs> I mean, like coming from the embedded space, you can think about devices that will last for years. I mean, like hmm. the controller of your elevator is certainly like 10 years old. Yes. The, the radio <laughs> system in your car is certainly 15 years old. In terms of the technology itself and, and how long the technology needs to leave. So yeah, that's definitely something you don't want to have to go and, and you know reflash the software too often. And some of them can't even be reflashed. So yeah, it's all more yeah. important to make it totally rock solid. Awesome. So um, there's one question I wanted to ask you. You talked about that a couple of times already, this notion of platform abstraction layer. Yes. Um, I'd like to understand a bit better what type of, of a, a abstraction we're implementing in the SDK for running on various types of platforms? Because you mentioned uh, Linux and Windows, but there's also microcontrollers running real-time OSs, yes. which makes for the most of what's out there in terms of devices. Mm -hmm. um, how do we architecture that CSDK so that it's actually usable and portable to these new platforms? Well, what do you know? I think I just happen to have that web page open already. Oh. Wow. <laughs> that was lucky. <laughs> And this gives a sense right here. We obviously try to keep the PAL as small as possible because that's the duplicated code. Okay. Uh, but and this is the most fundamental components of s the software, mm -hmm. so in the OS interface. So, for instance, networking code, how you the security, whether you use S channel or OpenSSL or Wolf, which is a lighter weight SSL client, locking, for instance, on the very low end devices may not even have threads, and so we our client has a way that you can just run in a single thread mode where you yourself are the one queuing off these requests. Okay. Okay. And, and I've heard about these, like, so you just mentioned that the, the, the threading model and so on. It could be also not just because the, the platform doesn't support it. it. It could be because the developer wants to have full control yes. over the multi-threading implementation of his application, right? Yes. So that's, that's critical on real-time systems. Uh, yeah, so, so um, I heard also some prerequisites in terms of having an SSL stack. 
Yes. You mentioned Wolf SSL. There are other ones that, that we do support or that run or that work with our the, SDK. The, the, the primary ones are going to be OpenSSL, which is the primary standard bearer for Linux. Okay. S-Channel, obviously, which is the Windows. And then Wolf SSL, which is a very lightweight one for a lot of these smaller microcontrollers use that. Okay. And so we already also do the porting or have some, some samples of how to do the porting on some platforms. Correct. But if I come with a new platform that Microsoft has not done the work to port, where do I start for this? What, what you would do is you would actually own your own repo for that. Okay. And then you would point to the CSDK as a submodule of that repo. Okay. The idea here is that because that it gets us out of each other's business. You want to be able to innovate quickly on your okay. repo, okay. move quickly. Okay. Now, obviously, it, it, the number of people doing PALs we think will be fairly small, and that's something where we're definitely happy to consult yeah. and say, oh, we'll do this and don't do that. And yeah. we're continuing to document this so that it, for more and more best practices as we Got learn it. about this. Yeah. So we have a we have a guide for that. So yes. helping people. And I also assume when I look at the architecture is that the parts that you need to port are tiny, right? It's not like a lot of code that you no. need to port. No. It's right? it's it's fairly it's fairly straightforward, and the interfaces are all more or less standard across. Like, what does it look like to send bytes on a network stack versus down the secure stack? We C obviously doesn't have the idea of inheritance or anything like that, but we try to have a similar interface with C functions to mimic that. Awesome. So pretty straightforward to get as a library. You can get the code. You have a porting guide. Like Off to the know. races. Build cool stuff. Awesome. Well, thanks, give, John. Give us pull requests. We're, we're always happy to make it better. That's a great introduction. So we'll add the link in the description yep. of the video so that people can join you guys on GitHub. Thank you very much, John. Have a good day. Thank you.